Hello again and welcome to another class, another lecture on construction equipment. And today we're going to discuss a new group of equipment called scrapers. So we're going to learn about what do they do, what do they look like, what's their uh, productivity and cycle time and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and discuss what scrapers are. What are scrapers? A scraper is a large bowl with a cutting edge that's attached to a pulling machine, a tractor that's going to pull that heavy and large bowl. It's used, as it appears from the name, to scrape the surface of the soil by lowering the cutting edge into the soil and moving forward to fill the bowl. Once the bowl is filled, the front apron is lowered, sealing the material inside the bowl. The machine moves and then later on downloads and discharges uh, that soil. Here are a few pictures reflecting what these uh, heavy uh, equipment look like. As you can see from the size of the tractor and the size of the bowl in, uh, behind it, it's a huge machine. That's, this is basically a self-elevating scraper. And now it's moving away from the site. In this uh, lower slide, you can see that it has lowered its bowl and the tractor is moving forward. And once this blade is lowered, it's going to start filling that bowl with the soil until the bowl is filled, the apron is lowered and then it's going to move away to uh, get rid of that soil. There are different types of scrapers. Some of them are single engine with a tractor at the, uh, in forward basically pulling that bowl or sometimes it's a twin engine with a tractor in front and a tractor in the back because once the bowl gets filled it's very heavy and maybe one engine might not be enough to move that load. Uh, the third type is push-pull, and the fourth type is elevating scraper. Let's have uh, a look at some of these uh, scrapers in action. Here in this uh, video clip, we're going to see the scrapers, a fleet of scrapers actually, following each other. Again, here's the tractor, and here's the bowl. The bowl is empty and obviously it's not being filled right now because as you can see the bowl keeps uh, empty so once it's, it lowers the blade and here you can see starting that the blade is, uh, is lowered and the bowl is starting to get filled very quickly it gets filled now it's very heavy and that's, how, that's why it's pushed by the scraper following it the scraper following it is going to do the same thing now it lowers the, it, its blade you can see that the soil is going to start filling the bowl, once it's full, it's going to close the bowl, lower the apron to close the bowl, and the third scraper is going to do the same thing, lowering its blade and so on and so forth. So as you can see, they move in tandem to be able to push that heavy load filling all of these different uh, scrapers. You can see the action here with the bowl being filled. Here's another clip again showing the scraper in action and you can see the amount of resistance it's going to face from from the soil now the blade is still up so it's moving relatively easily once the blade gets down now you can see uh, some slipping and some uh, resistance to the motion here you can see it very clearly and you can see the soil filling the bowl with the blade being down and now this is a very strong tractor because it has two bowls behind it here's the soil filling and once it gets done with the first one lowers the blade lowers the apron closes the bowl and then moves to the following uh, to the following bowl to fill it You can, you can feel the resistance that the, uh, the tractor is facing, moving that very heavy load. Now both of the bowls are, are filled. Here 
here you can see closing same thing for the forward one and it's primarily going to be used for uh, cutting and leveling uh, the site to uh, to uh, to prepare for any other uh, earthwork operations here it's filling again the apron is up the blade is down another use for these bowls again they're going to serve as just containers and they're going to be filled with excavated soil from another operation as you can see with this shovel you can see the heap capacity of the shovel now that the bowls are full it's moving away from from the site so you can see here that's the floor of the bowl that's the apron and here's the cutting edge the blade that scrapes the soil so what are the primary uses topsoil removal different layers contour grading drainage ditch cutting mass excavation again it can go in different cycles for mass excavation fill construction and the most economical scraper to use for a job depends on the characteristics of the job and the material to be removed we're talking about the density of the material how big the bowl is and how big how strong the tractors pulling capacity is length of the haul road haul road conditions which are going to affect of course the uh, rolling resistance and the grade resistance and so on and the pusher requirement if we're going to need an additional pusher in addition to the front tractor to keep pushing that scraper elevating scrapers are more suitable if haul distance is short and haul road conditions are good so it's not too bumpy it does not have a very high rolling resistance Conventional scrapers uh, are used if material contains rock too large to use by elevator. The elevator is going to elevate the soil. It's something like a conveyor belt. But in case you have large boulders, they cannot be lifted with this elevator or this uh, conveyor belt. Then you're going to just use the regular scraper with the blade opening the apron. is going to lift that rock inside the bowl. Twin engine scrapers are used for high road resistance rolling and grade because again the power the pulling power of one engine is not going to be able to pull the heavy weight of the scraper itself and the additional load of the soil inside the bowl the scraper production uh, scrapers are rated in terms of bowl rated capacity or the volume and rated load weight if you remember in our previous discussions we mentioned that sometimes the operation is going to be weight controlled and sometimes it's going to be volume controlled. So if, for example, you're trying to transport some soil through a truck and the truck has a certain rated capacity and it has a certain volume, if the density of the soil is too high, what might happen is that you're going to reach the full loading capacity of the truck before filling the whole volume. So again, in this case, it would be weight controlled. If the density is not that high, then the controlling factor is going to be the volume of the bed of that truck. The bowl rated capacity is provided, of course, in loose cubic yards because that soil has already been disturbed. In terms of struck capacity or heaped capacity, because you can either base it on the struck capacity of the bowl, the volume, or the heaped capacity if you're going to have a heap. Production depends on the volume of scraper bowl, rated maximum weight how much soil can it take available horsepower because again we're going to look at the rim pull 
and the draw bar pull of the tractor pulling that uh, that ball available horsepower nature of material being loaded again the density is going to affect is it going to be weight controlled or volume controlled length profile and surface condition of the hauled road because again you might have some resistance that's going to prevent you from moving on that road if you have a very very high rolling resistance or effective grade or uh, just grade resistance again that might affect the operation and the operation efficiency because always we include the E, the efficiency in the calculations of production. So whether it's 45 minutes an hour, 30 minutes an hour, 50 minutes an hour, that's going to affect the production rate. Production is going to be measured by volume per cycle. Each cycle is you start, you position, you move, scraping, you, you move away, you download and come back ready for a new cycle. And number of, of operating cycles per operating hour. So as we have done with all the other pieces of equipment that we've discussed so far. The production is volume per cycle times cycles per hour, and then we look at the details on how to calculate the volume per cycle and how to calculate the number of cycles per hour, which is going to be predominantly dependent on the cycle time and the speed. It's going to be affected by the speed of operation and the grade and the, the engine power and so on. Let's look at an example to illustrate our discussion so far. A contractor uses a John Deere 862B elevating scraper. Elevating scraper, so basically we're, gonna, we're not going to have a lot of boulders and so on. With a rated heaped volume of 17 cubic yards. That's obviously loose cubic yards. And a rated load of 40,800 pounds. What is the maximum load the scraper can carry per cycle? with dry clay weighing 2,700 pounds per bank cubic yard and a swell factor of 30%. And then we're going to repeat the calculations for another situation. What's the maximum load the scraper can carry per cycle when loaded with wet earth, a little bit heavier, weighing 3,000 pounds per bank cubic yard with a swell of 20%. So what we're going to check basically here is, is that scraper going to be weight controlled or is it going to be volume controlled, which means it's going to be able to carry the seven, 17 loose cubic yards. So we're going to check for the weight of the 17 loose cubic yards. 17 loose cubic yards times 2,700 pounds per bank cubic yard divided by 1.3 to convert that bank into loose. So that gives us a uh, converting the 17 loose cubic yards into bank, basically. And that gives us a total of 35,308 pounds. Since the load weight is 40,800 pounds, so obviously we're going to be able to fill the bowl with 17 loose cubic yards before reaching the maximum weight capacity, the 40,800 pounds. So since the load weight is less than the rated weight, the scraper will be loaded to its full heap capacity of 17 loose cubic yards. The weight of the 17 loose cubic yards of wet earth, the other situation, the other condition is 17, again, 17 loose cubic yards, times 3,000, that's 3,000 pounds per bank cubic yard, divided by 1.2 to convert the loose cubic yards, the 17, into bank, and that gives us a total weight of 42,500 pounds. Obviously, that's more than the full rated capacity of that, uh, the weight uh, capacity of uh, of the scraper, which is 40,800. So since the load weight exceeds the rated capacity, then the volume that can be safely moved by the scraper will be reduced to, it's going to be controlled by the weight. So we're going to be basically looking at these 40,800 pounds, how many cubic yards are they going to form? So 40,800 times 1.2 divided by 3,000, which is the density, and that gives us only 16.3 loose cubic yards. So it's not going to be filled uh, totally. Now to calculate the cycle time and the production rate uh, uh, based on that, as with other pieces of equipment, the scraper cycle time can be estimated as the cycle time is equal to fixed time plus variable time. Fixed time, that's the property of the equipment itself. Variable time is a property of the road conditions and so on and so forth. So uh, the productivity is equal to the rated capacity times 
the operational efficiency divided by the cycle time. So let's see how we're going to calculate that. Here we have uh, different tables that give us different factors that affect whether it's the job conditions and uh, uh, that, that, that are going to primarily affect the fixed time and so on. How are you going to load it? Is it push loaded single engine, push loaded twin engine, push pull or self loading elevator? In our case we have an elevator self loading uh, uh, scraper. And then we also have, if you remember when we discussed the trucks and the hauling and so on, if you are going to be operating on a very short stretch of, uh, of, of road, then by the time you reach your maximum speed, you have to start braking to stop at the end of that stretch. So we're going to have a factor that's going to affect that maximum speed. Because once you calculate the maximum speed from the performance curves, you have to multiply it by that factor. And in this case, the factor for the short speed is going to be 0.45. It's going to affect the maximum speed. It's going to be only 45% of the maximum speed. And if you have a long stretch of road like 5,000 feet, then the factor in this case is going to be 96%. We are already familiar with this table because we have used it before. And what we have here on this slide is again something that we have seen before and we already know how to use it, which is a performance chart. In this case, it's for a, a scraper. We have the weight both loaded and empty. We have the effective grade represented by these parallel lines. And then we have the different gears. So we are going to use the weight to intersect with the effective grade, go horizontally and check which gear is that going to be intersecting with. And then that's going to give us the speed and which gear are we going to op be operating with it. Here's another example of a very similar one. Again, here's the loaded weight and here's the empty weight. The push loading scrapers, uh, again, as we have seen before, sometimes the engine of the tractor in front of the bowl is not enough to move that scraper. So scrapers sometimes require assistance in loading to fill the rated capacity. Push-pull scrapers can work in tandem to help each other, as we have seen in uh, the video clip that we, we, we saw a few minutes ago. Non-elevating scrapers need pushers to load because they cannot lift the soil on their own. Crawler tractors are usually used since they have better traction than wheeled tractors, especially on uh, when you have a high uh, resistance then in this case the crawlers are going to be better. We have seen with the wheeled tractor how there was some slipping and then it overcame that slipping and started moving forward. The loading method can be either backtrack loading, chain loading or shuttle loading. We're going to see some pictures representing each one of these different types of loading. So when scrapers are push loaded, the material in the bowl gets compacted due to the pressure of forcing the material into the bowl. Now imagine the bowl is moving forward, the blade is down, so it's being filled. As the bowl is getting filled, the new soil compresses the old soil inside the bowl already. So the density of the material in the bowl is determined by the equation. The density is equal to 100%, 110% times the bank density divided by 100% plus 12, which means it's 110% of the loose uh, density of that soil. Now here we have this picture representing the, uh, the push uh, phase. You have here the tractor and then you have another tractor here in the back. It pushes it forward and now once the scraper is fully loaded that pusher goes back to push another scraper. So they work, they are in parallel here. You push the first one and then only the pusher goes back. Now the tractor is going to move that uh, bowl forward and the pusher here in the back is going to move back and it's going to push another tractor. So this is called the back track loading. Back track because only the pusher goes back and it pushes another uh, scraper. Whereas in the second one called chain loading, Basically, 
The second scraper is standing a little bit ahead of the first one. So you push the first one until it's able to move, the ball is filled, it moves away, and then the pusher just positions itself in uh, behind the next scraper and then keeps pushing it and so on. So it's called this is called chain loading because it's not backtracking to go back to the same original position. The third method is called shuttle loading. So basically again, you push the first scraper until it moves out of the way and then you go back the other scraper is facing the other way around so the other way uh, the other scraper the second scraper is moving in the opposite direction so you go behind the second scraper and start pushing it so this is called shuttle loading because it goes sort of in a circle or in a closed circuit to determine the number of scrapers and pushers uh, to determine the number of scrapers a pusher can load we must determine the pusher cycle time. So the cycle time for the pusher is the time to contact the scraper, to touch it, and then time to push it while it loads, and then time to boost it out of the cut once the ball is filled, and then time to maneuver to contact the next scraper, and that depends on the method of loading, if it's going to be shuttle or is it going to be backtracking and so on. If no performance data exists, the cycle time for the pusher can be estimated as 1.4 LS, which is the loading time for the scraper in minutes, plus 0.25 minutes, which is the time to make that contact and to start pushing that scraper. So it's, it's 1.4 times the loading cycle time for the scraper plus 0.25 minutes, or 15 seconds basically. The boost time, which is time assisting the scraper out of cut, 0.1 minute. Return time is estimated to be 40% of load time because now the pusher goes back empty. It does not have the same resistance so it can come back at a higher speed. The maneuver time is 0.15 minutes, again to maneuver and to position itself behind the next scraper. Therefore, the number of scrapers that a loader can push is determined by the equation N, the number of scrapers, is equal to the cycle time of the scraper divided by the cycle time of the pusher. CTS is the cycle time for the scraper and CTP is the cycle time of the pusher. Let's look at an example again, it's going to make things easier. A CAT 631E single engine scraper will be used to excavate the side, the side of a large fill to level a construction site. The soil is sandy clay weighing 2,700 pounds per bank cubic yard with a swell of 18%. The scraper has a 450 horsepower turbocharged diesel engine. The haul road is 4,000 feet. The distance is 4,000 feet with an uphill grade of 3% from the cut area to the dump area. The rolling resistance is 85, 85 pounds per ton and the coefficient of traction is 0.4. A D8N crawler will be used to push the scrapers to load them to heat capacity. The project site has an elevation of 3,000 feet. Now, look at the problem and each word has a certain meaning now. Here it gives us an elevation of 3,000 feet. In the older problems that we have solved with other pieces of equipment, we had the D rating factor due to the elevation. But, notice here that it told us that this is turbocharged diesel engine. And we have mentioned before that turbocharged diesel engines are not affected by the elevation. So this is sort of a trick. If you do understand the nature of the engine and it's not going to be affected by any derating factor, then this number is totally redundant and we're not going to be using it. The scraper has the following characteristics. The rated capacity, 31 cubic yards, loose cubic yards of course. The empty weight, 96,880 pounds. The maximum load, 75,000 pounds. The weight distribution, when empty on the drive axle, it's 67%, rear axle, 33%. And when loaded, again, it's sort of balanced. The drive axle is 53% and the rear axle, 47%. What's the estimated production of the scraper in bank cubic yards if the operation efficiency is 50 minutes per hour 
and the scraper does not wait in the cut for a pusher and how many scrapers can a pusher load so we're going to need to calculate the cycle time for a pusher and the cycle time for a scraper to determine how many pushers are we going to need this problem might look familiar because we have solved something similar to that when we're talking about haulers when we're talking about trucks and the different types of resistance that they're going to face and so on and so forth so we're going to follow exactly the same steps first of all we're going to check if we're going to be weight controlled or volume controlled the density of the material the scraper will carry is determined by the equation density now here we're going to apply this is going to be unique to the scrapers because of the compression factor and the compaction factor that's going to take place so the density is 110 percent the bank density divided by 100 percent plus the swell factor which gives us basically 110 percent of the loose cubic uh, density lo loose density which is 25 17 pounds per cubic yard per loose cubic yard the weight of the load when filled to heap capacity the capacity is 31 loose cubic yards so the total weight is going to be 31 times 25 17 and that gives a total weight of 78,027 pounds which is beyond the load capacity of that uh, scraper because the load capacity the maximum weight was 75,000 pounds which means we are not going to be able to fill it to the heap capacity of 31 uh, loose cubic yards so what would be the volume that's going to be applicable in this case it's going to be 75,000 pounds divided by the density which gives 29.8 loose cubic yards which can be translated into bank cubic yards by dividing by the bank capacity 75,000 pounds divided by the bank capacity the bank density which gives 27.8 bank cubic yards so that was the first check so we learned here that it's going to be weight controlled not volume controlled the next step is to estimate the cycle time of the scraper with average job conditions we get a loading time that's from the tables that we have seen a couple of slides before we get a loading time of 0.7 minutes spotting a delay time of 0.3 minutes and a dump time of 0.5 minutes all of these from the table which makes the fixed time 0.7 plus 0.3 plus 0.5 that's 1.5 minutes the maximum rim pull generated by the scraper is going to be the coefficient of traction times the weight on the moving axles so it's going to be when it's empty the coefficient of traction is 0.4 times 0.67 which is the weight on the moving axle times the total load the total weight when empty which is uh, 96,880 which gives a rim pull of 25,964 pounds now when it's full we're going to add the load of the soil in addition to the weight of the scraper itself the coefficient of traction is still 0.4 the weight distribution has changed because of the uh, heavier load on the other axle so it's times 0.53 times 96,880 plus the weight inside the bowl which is 75,000 pounds which gives 36,439 pounds so that's the uh, regenerated rim pull. Now we have, we can convert that into tons, the total weight into tons, by dividing by 2000, which is 85.9 tons. That's to calculate the resistance because the resistance is, uh, the factor here that we use is in tons. So the uh, resistance is going to be, the force of the resistance is going to be the rolling resistance plus the grade resistance, which is 80 pounds per ton the factor times the total weight 85.9 tons plus the grade 3 percent times 20 pounds per ton per percent slope times the weight in tons which gives a total of total resistance of 12,456 pounds now the required drain pool to overcome the resistance is less than the generated drain pool so basically the scraper can move forward the resistance is not going to be enough to stop the scraper from moving we have seen here while it was empty 25,900 almost 26,000 and when it's full 36.4 and the required the resistance is 12.4 so we are quite safe 
Now to calculate the effective grade, because we're going to need to plug that into the performance chart, we divide the rolling resistance by 20 pounds per ton, that's a constant. So 85 divided by 20, that's 4.25, plus the already existing grade 3%, that gives us a total grade of 7.25% uh, percent when it's loading and when it's moving forward. On the way back, we're going to subtract the grade, so we have 85 divided by 20, which is 4.25, minus 3, so we have still an effective grade of 1.25%. Using the effective grade on the performance chart, we get a speed of 10 miles per hour. To get the average speed, we incorporate the speed factor from the tables. We mentioned that uh, for starting from standstill for half of the road and coming to a stop for the other half. So basically, if the road distance is 4,000, we divide it by 2. So the factor from the table is going to be 0.92. Therefore, the average speed when loaded is going to be uh, 0.92 times 11. That's 10.12 miles per hour. And the average speed, this should be 11, by the way, not 10. The average speed when empty on the way back is going to be 0.92 times 33 miles per hour, which gives 30.3 mile, miles per hour. And this is basically how we obtain these numbers. We plugged in the weight when loaded with a 7.25 effective grade and that gave us this line horizontally we go here we're gonna hit the fifth gear and that's gonna give us a speed notice for by the way that the first numbers are in kilometers per hour and the lower scale is in miles per hour so it's gonna be about 11 miles per hour and that's what what we use in the equation now when empty here's the weight when empty and we had an effective grade of 1.25 so basically if we keep just going it's not gonna hit even the 1.25 so we're gonna use that speed which is basically uh, we're gonna keep going down until we, we we reach the the maximum speed which is gonna be about 33 miles per hour so in the 4,000 feet which we're gonna divide by two as we had just discussed uh, the time is going to be 4,000 divided by the 88 to convert the uh, feet into miles per hour uh, divided by the speed and that gives us a time of 4.5 minutes moving forward moving backward the speed is 30.3 so we have 1.5 minutes therefore the variable time is the sum of these two 4.5 and 1.5 that's 6 minutes we had already calculated the fixed time to be a minute and a half so the total cycle time is fixed plus variable. That's a total of 7.5 minutes. The productivity is going to be the load per cycle times the number of cycles. So the load per cycle is 27.8 bank cubic yards times operation efficiency, which is 50 minutes per hour, divided by the cycle time, which gives the total capacity or total production of 185.33 bank cubic yards per hour. The pusher cycle time is equal to 1.4 because we're not given any information about the pusher, so we're going to use the equation 1.4, the scraper load time plus 0.25 minutes, which is 1.4 times 0.7, which is the loading time for the scraper, plus 0.25 minutes and that gives us and the 0.7 minutes is from the table that we have used before so it gives us a cycle time of 1.2 minutes now if the cycle time for the scraper is 7.5 minutes and the cycle time for the pusher is 1.2 minutes so how many scrapers can one pusher serve the number of scrapers is going to be scraper cycle time divided by pusher cycle time so that gives 6.25 scrapers which is going to be rounded down to six scrapers. So one pusher can serve six scrapers. That's basically how we calculate the production for a scraper and the number of pushers and the number of scrapers and so on and so forth. I hope that has been uh, uh, un well understood and we, uh, we have seen the solved example. Please make sure that you try to change the numbers and resolve the problem to get more practice and to gain uh, speed in solving the problems which are going to help you 
finishing the problems on the exam. Well, good luck and I'll see you in another lecture.